Greg and his dog Sniff Sniff were being sent to Tiki Island to stay with Grandma O'Connor while Greg's dad was away at work. Greg already missed his dad and wished he could do exciting work like him. Grandma O'Connor had told Greg he would have many adventures on the island. Greg was used to living in a big, busy city, and now he was moving to a small island town. He didn't want to hurt his grandma's feelings, though, so he always tried to sound excited when he talked to her on the phone. Grandma O'Connor had a quiet little house outside of town. There were no buses, no trains, or cool subways. Greg thought it was nice, but not very exciting. He thought the flamingos in the front yard were interesting, until he realized they were plastic. For days, Greg had done nothing but sit around, moping, and making it known that he was bored. Grandma handed him a shovel and a shade tree. She thought a little work would be just the thing to get him out of the house and exploring. How about planting this in the backyard, she said. Dig it right by the old wooden statue. You can't miss it. Greg was just bored enough to take her up on the offer. Come on, Sniff Sniff, Greg said. Maybe after we plant the tree, we can fall asleep underneath it. Greg and Sniff Sniff went out to dig the hole. As they dug deeper, they hit something. Sniff Sniff, what's that? Something was poking up. Sniff Sniff found what looked like an old medallion. It appeared to be broken into two halves. Whoa, Greg said, and he grabbed some nearby rope to tie it around his neck like a necklace. The necklace was just the beginning. They discovered the hole opened up even deeper. Greg went underground and discovered more wooden-looking tiki statues that looked like the one in Grandma's backyard. Sniff Sniff, get down here, quick, Greg said. But Sniff Sniff liked just where he was. Greg dug up all the statues and stood them next to each other. I wonder if this medallion belongs to them, he said, and began to put the two pieces together. Just then, Greg found the greatest adventure anyone could ever imagine. The ground started to tremble and the tikis started glowing. Ah! They're alive! Don't be afraid, the blue tiki said. We are the protectors of Tiki Island. My name is Zeke. I am the leader of the Neon Tiki tribe. We are a team sworn to protect this island. What's your name? The pink tiki asked. Hi, my name's Sniff, and this is my dog Greg Greg. Er, I mean, I'm Greg, and this is my dog Sniff Sniff. It's okay, fluffy one. We are your friends. I'm Moa the Great, strongest tiki of all Tiki Island. See? Here's proof, Moa said as he pointed to his big muscles. And I'm Dar, the green tiki said as he raced around everyone. I'm faster than lightning. Even Moa the Great can't catch the fastest tiki. But he couldn't outrun Moa's giant fist. Dar's even better at running his mouth, laughed Moa. Zeke explained to Greg that they wear special shades for superpowers. And if we're awake, that means the Koo Tikis can't be far behind. Greg was puzzled. Koo Tikis? You mean there's more Tikis like you? Not like us, Greg. The Koo Tikis are evil and want to take over this island. Zeke was right. Greg wasn't the only person on Tiki Island who found a medallion. A guy named Sam found one years ago and always kept it to himself, hoping it would have superpowers. That very day Greg discovered the Neons, Sam used his medallion and woke the Ku Tiki tribe from their long slumber. Oh! 
Who woke us? Snarled the little one that looked like a flame. Relax, hothead, said Sam. I'm not here to cause trouble. Well, not with you guys anyways. Good, cause we have some unfinished business to take care of, hissed Hookah. Oh yeah? Like what? Asked Sam. To take over this cruddy island. And beat the Neons in the process, said the leader. <laughs> I can get on board with that, said Sam. Let's head into town and introduce you guys to the island folk. As they marched into town, Garmo used his shades to grow to super size. Bracchus shouted at all the town people, I am Bracchus, leader of the Kutiki tribe. Give us all your money, you hear? All your money! Don't forget video games too, boss, said Garmo. Oh yeah, and all your video games. If you don't, Big Boy here will stomp on your entire crummy town. Smash time! The Neon Tiki tribe rushed into town as soon as they heard the commotion. They confronted the Ku Tiki tribe, lining up in a row, face to face with their enemies for the first time in decades. Well, well, looky who woke up from their nap. It's the Neon Goody Goodies, Pyra laughed. It's you who's in for a rude awakening, Dar said. Hold the line, Tikis. They may be bigger and stronger, but they're still just as slow. Greg peeked around a corner and watched in amazement. Time to take you down! Just before the action started, Greg encouraged his new pals. I know it's a tall order, Greg said, but together we can defeat these guys. And by we, I really mean you. Moa used his shades to form a giant old-fashioned catapult that slung Zeke rocketing towards Garmo. When Zeke knocked Garmo's shades off, <sighs> he hit the ground and returned to his original size. We kick it old school, said Zeke. Dar blew by Hookah and Pyra with his super speed. You can't hit me, na 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 na, he said. My smokescreen should slow you down, said Hookah as he prepared to fire his shades at Dar. But he was so busy watching Dar, he didn't notice Tia sneaking up behind them. Hyra saw Tia out of the corner of her eye, but it was too late. Tia's ice shades froze them both in a solid sheet of ice. Look out, Hookah! Bracchus was the only bad Tiki left. Knowing he was defeated, he wanted to get out of there, fast. Zeke and the rest of the Tikis were happy to help him out. Hey, Moa, still have that catapult? Zeke asked. Sure hope those are dolphin fins. Sure hope Bracchus can swim. I got water up my nose. Greg couldn't believe where the day had taken him. Just when he thought Tiki Island was boring, he had made the greatest discovery. He and Sniff Sniff headed back to Grandma's. You're back. Boy, it looks like you've been working hard. Shade trees are something, aren't they? Grandma said. Oh yeah, I've never seen shades quite like these, Greg said. Thank you.